It is the radio segment that just got married to a Kardashian. Oh. oh now it just divorced a Kardashian. Oh. Laser Stories, <laughs> the segment where we read weird news stories from around the globe, just like every other radio show does, except we have a laser, and those other idiots don't. This first laser story is out of Staten Island, New York. A 31-year-old woman named Carol James went into a Popeye's fast food establishment earlier this month and ordered their $4 deal. Comes with chicken strips, a biscuit, and a side, but no drink. Mm, sounds good. Yeah, well, good deal. When Carol got her meal, she was so upset that she didn't get a soda that she picked up a chair and smashed the front window out of the store. Oh, kapooya! Kapooya! Just pay the extra dollar, lady. Jeez. After screaming at the manager, it was clear what happened. Carol had actually confused the Popeye's value meal with the Wendy's $4 deal. Oh, and Carol. that one does include a drink. Oh, oh. now that's embarrassing, yeah. the confusion. So she was arrested and taken into custody. So you really can't just apologize and let that one be gone. Yeah. I'm guessing that she's only going to Wendy's from now on. Yep. This next laser story is out of Springfield, Oregon. A cop tried to stop a 35-year-old guy named Brock Williams outside of a grocery store last week for an outstanding warrant. Mm. But Brock sped off on his motorcycle. Uh-oh. And as he was pulling away, the cop noticed that he had customized plates that said X felon. Ha-ha! <laughs> so... <laughs> anyone think that's a good idea? Yeah, it's not even cool. The no. officer yeah, like... <laughs> looked it up, and it was in fact true. Brock is a convicted felon, <laughs> but that's about the only thing that was honest since it was a stolen motorcycle, oh. Oh, no. and those weren't the original plates. So he put his own Wait. ex-felon plates <laughs> on a stolen motorcycle. Because he wanted to, like, fly under the radar, not yeah. have anybody notice him. Oh, my God. Anyway, the cops caught him when he went down a dead-end street, and then he got off the motorcycle and tried to walk away. Oh, yeah, just nonchalantly. <laughs> yeah, he was arrested yep. on several charges. Ex-felon? <laughs> what ex-felon? <laughs> what I'm a current about? felon, actually, sir. Uh, it's not my motorcycle. I don't yeah. know whose motorcycle that is. <laughs> this next laser story is out of Oshoro, Japan. Masazao Nonaka is the oldest living man in the world. He's almost 113 years old. And when reporters came to interview him at his home, he decided to share some sage advice. He says the key to living a long life are these three things. Number one, soaking in hot springs whenever he can. That sounds lovely. I'll take that advice. Number two, not depriving yourself from eating desserts on a nightly basis. God, why do I love this guy even more? (laughs) And the last key to living a very long life is telling people off, he says. (laughs) Masa Hazao says letting idiots know they are doing dumb things helps release negative energy (laughs) so that you can get on with your day. So if you want to take his advice and you want to be as old as possible, Mm -hmm. then you should, I guess, install a hot tub eat a bunch of ice cream every night and start (laughs) telling people exactly what you don't like about them. Yeah, Seems really doable, actually. I'm doing it for my own longevity. Sorry it hurts your feelings. This next laser story is out of the fascinating world of photography. Stars sparkle across a deep blue sky at Emmes National Park in Brazil. A glowing termite mound illuminates the night. Below the structure, an anteater creeps forward. This is the scene captured by Marcio Cabral's photograph, The Night Raider. This sounds fascinating. And it was I one of the to do all our show like this right now. Big winners in last year's Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition. Okay, what happened? Just one problem after winning, critics gave the picture a closer look, and it was found out that Marcio may have cheated. Oh, Marcio, come on, man. Instead of a real animal. He used a stuffed anteater. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. Wait, and it was after the comp. Like, the whole point of these judges is to closely examine photographs, and they didn't notice till after they awarded them yep. the prize. Apparently, he found it too challenging to find a real anteater in the location of his picture, so uh-huh. he put a fake one there, and then took a couple pictures, and he won. Oh, wow. What well, a realistic doll. Right. After it's experts not photoshopped. found out his prize was revoked on the grounds that the animal in the photo is not, in fact, a real living animal. Uh-huh. And now he's barred from participating in national future competitions. Oh, oh man. Although I think it's more to his credit that he knew it would make a beautiful picture. 
<laughs> and he staged it. I think that's fine. Yeah, yeah, who wants a minion in the in the wilderness? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who wants to wait and wait and wait for right? a real exactly. one to come around? It could take a <laughs> long got time. Things to do, people. <laughs> this next laser story is out of Chore Headquarters. The running joke has been going on for decades. People complaining the washing machine has been eating their socks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it might actually be true. What? <laughs> really? And maybe we finally know where to find them. There's a photo going viral on Twitter that supposedly shows what happened when a landlord removed the bottom panel from one of the wa- washing machines in her building. There's a compartment down there, and it's packed with socks. <laughs> This, and it's like the panel where you would look like underneath where the drum is, right? Yeah. I mean, not that. not your lint trap. Like, literally, you have to take the front of oh, your washing machine okay. off, basically. But so it's still. possible that all your missing socks are trapped in a hidden compartment at the bottom of your machine. If you have an older washing machine or dryer, it could be worth opening up to take a look. But newer machines are made a little tighter, so there isn't space for things to fall through the cracks. But the old ones might actually be eating your socks. Oh, I, it's definitely why happening is, to me and, my apartment complex. But here's the weird Why is it only socks? Why were there no underwear in that picture? There's no, like, huh. little shirts or tank tops? No, I guess they're just not creepy. The machines it's obviously have a foot cool. fetish. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. This next laser story is out of Survey World. A new survey showed pictures of old technology to kids who were between 6 and 18 years old <laughs> and asked them what they were looking at. And here are some of the interesting results. Nine percent of kids had no idea what a disposable camera was. <laughs> that makes sense. Twenty-three percent had never seen a postcard. Really? Yep. Twenty-seven wow. percent had no idea what a typewriter was. Huh. Forty percent of children had no knowledge of cassette tapes. Oh yeah, I could see that. Sixty-seven percent didn't know what a floppy disk was. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I barely see that. know what those are anymore. <laughs> totally. Seventy-one percent of kids had no clue. What an overhead projector did. Oh, man. Those things are so awesome. And a whopping 86% of kids had never seen a pager before. Oh, oh yeah. Pager. There's a wow. real payphone by my daughter's uh, preschool, and the uh-huh. kids pick it up, and they're, they don't understand, like, because you hear the dial tone. Yeah. And they're like, what is that? Yeah, their mind is just blown. Yeah, they're like, that's why right. is it making noise? Oh, that's right. I don't even think about that. I saw somebody t- say something online the other day, I think, about, like, they had gotten a phone call or something and they told their kid oh it was a landline and the kid had no idea yeah. what that meant like, oh what? my god all these kids line up just to hear the phone there's literally like a line of 10 kids like i want to hear i want to hear this next laser story is out of the study of complaining researchers in canada analyzed the tweets about many things and found two disturbing trends apparently people use equally depressing language in two very specific scenarios mm. tweets about terror attacks and tweets about cold weather don't! What? Wait, that yep. we use the same language when we're talking about cold weather or getting attacked by terrorists. Yes. Is that what you're telling what? us? Mm-hmm. Just terrifying. And that's not the only bad news we got today about the weather and how it affects us. A different study out of Portland found that warm weather makes us more stressed than cold weather. I don't believe it. What? Yeah. Recount. I, I, yeah, I don't believe that at all. So basically, cold weather makes us depressed. Warm weather makes us stressed. Okay, so never are we in a good state? No. Is that what we're finding out? Like overcast and and 60. Yeah, not as far as weather is (laughs) concerned. I don't know how you are comfortable now. So stay, I guess, stay indoors and don't go in the weather? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you just don't ever leave the house, is what they're saying, I guess. Got Which it. would be fine for this guy. Yeah, he's busy. He is. He can stay inside all day. <laughs> just hump that shoe. Yeah. That's the sound of a turtle humping a shoe. Which means that Laser Stories has come to an end for the day. We'll do it again, same time, on Wednesday.